supply thief who has been terrorizing local gas stations was finally apprehended over the weekend. We have reports that he's being released on bond this afternoon. Can't keep stealing art supplies, man. What are you gonna learn? Okay, let's finish the diorama. If you recall, in the last video I made this house. Well, now it's time to make all this other junk. <coughs> so the idea is the house is kind of like carved into the side of a cliff face or a rock formation. And my first idea was to use some kind of expanding foam. But I think the easiest thing to do is just to use layers of styrofoam that I already have. So we need to go out to the garage and get it. By the way, one of the reasons I've been working inside is, well, the garage looks like this. And I have not had the mental fortitude or emotional strength to clean it. <laughs> so it's easier to just go to a new location. <laughs> Yay. Anyways, we're just gonna take this and we're gonna cut it into layers and stack it up and then start to carve it. Oh, it looks as though something may have died in here. <laughs> oh well. All right, let's uh, make some mountains together. <laughs> After carefully removing the play stick on both sides of the foam, I cut it into strips and then a buttload of squares, which I glued up, stacking them together, creating a bloke. Then I traced around what will be the base and the house, which will then give me the shape I need to cut out on the bang saw. <laughs> I'm letting it dry just a tiny bit before we do anything else because uh, the glue on the inside didn't have contact to the air, so it's still a little gooey. But in the meantime, we're gonna make a tree. My fern has sprouted out a new fronds. Is that a fronds for fern? I know there's a palm fronds, but uh, I don't know if there's a fern fronds. Pay attention! I was gonna use regular like branches and stuff, but I'm very anal and I want it to look like that. And I don't think I can get that result by using real branches. So I'm gonna make it out of wire. Uh, this is actually like bonsai wire, but you can use any kind of aluminum or copper wire, whatever wire you want. I'm gonna use the same method I used in the video where I make a tree from wire, but <laughs> I don't actually remember all the steps. After watching my own tutorial, in order to know how to make the tree, I start making the tree. I'm not going to go into depth on how, because I already made an entire video on how, which you can go and watch, but the short explanation is I drill some holes in a plastic bouquet, and after poking the wires through those holes, twist the upper section into a trunk shape, then branching sections off as you go up, twisting them as well to create those things the leaves grow on. Once the upper section is the way you like it, remove it from the bouquet and twist up the roots. Normally at this point, I'd twist the ends of the wires up to create the leaf pads, but this time we're going to be making those out of styrofoam. But before we go any further, we need to finish carving the rock formation, which will determine the final shape and pose of the tree. And the way I did that is I just started hacking off chunks with a laser blade while periodically making sure it still fit up against the house. I also decided to cut some stairs into it because the lo-fi girl needs a way to get into her room. Once the basic shape was complete, I carved in the rock texture. But the only problem about that is I don't like it. <laughs> it looks like dinky. So we're gonna cover it and some of this epoxy dare that will not only give it sort of a hard crustular shell, it'll allow me to fix any boo-boos I've made. The product I'm using is called Freeform Air, and it's an epoxy dough that you mix one to one by volume. Then just smoosh it on and sculpt it like regular clay. Also, if you squunch up some aluminum foil, you can smoosh it on the surface and add some rocky textures. I also added some to the steps because <laughs> who wants to walk on mushy styrofoam steps? Once the clay hardened, I coated the entire thing with gray paint. While that's drying, let's finish the trees. Uh. My idea is to take our little wire trees and we're gonna moosh in some caulk into all the gapes and stuff just so it makes it a solid thing instead of a bunch of wires. And uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, that goes for both of us, Bobby. 
As I mentioned earlier, I took some diluted caulk and proceeded to paint the entire surface, filling in all the crooks and nannies. After adding a few layers and letting them dry, I smushed all the roots around the rock where I plan on eventually gluing it. It'll make it look like the tree sprouted there a long time ago, and now the roots are clinging to the side of the cliff. Now we'll go ahead and add a brown base coat the way I like it. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. What the heck is going on over there? Oh. This is my daughter Avery, and she has a very unusual talent. Avery. But I'm pretty sure my shift gets, I get off early. Do the zombie scream. <laughs> Wait. I also have an unusual talent, and that's for creating seamless segues for thanking today's sponsor, BetterHelp. <gasps> you ever go through these big swings where you're like doing really well for a while, and then you're not doing very well for a while? Well, me too. In fact, I'm currently trying to crawl out of a not doing very well moment as we speak. But the one thing that helps me get out of the funk faster than anything else is therapy. And whatever form of low you experience, therapy can get you out of it faster, but also help you from getting there in the first place. One thing that makes BetterHelp great is its accessibility. From the comfort of your own home, after filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you with a credentialed therapist in as little as a few days. It's also incredibly easy because it's online Line, it's remote, and it doesn't matter if you have any specific diagnosis. Sometimes we just go through hard times, and therapy can give you tools to approach your life in different ways. So, if you'd like to help yourself while also helping me, please go to the description and click the link, or you can go to betterhelp.com forward slash bobbydukearts and sign up for 10% off your first month with a credentialed professional specific to your needs. Heck, we all go through low points. We just don't have to stay there. As I was saying, I like the design. I just don't like how smooth and weird the texture looks. So I think we need to add some more realistic bjark. So let's go get some. If you haven't noticed, sometimes at the base of plants, there's dirt. And sometimes there's bark in that dirt. I just grabbed a few handfuls and put it in a mortar and pestle and just started grinding like a normal person. Once the bark was ground to the size I desired, using Mod Podge, I applied it to the surface of our little trees till it looks like Violet. Moving to the foliage pads. To make those, it's super simple. Just cut some little roundish blobby foam chunks. Then I roughened up the surface to make them look like little clouds. Slippy slapped on a coat of green paint. And then we're gonna take some of this green mottled turf stuff and stick it all over using even more Mod Podge until they look like dank nugs. Then all that's left to do is smoosh the pads onto the trunks, gluing them in place, and now your broccoli is finished. Moving on. So, we need to finish this gray, chunky mass that uh, hopefully will look more like rocks in just a second. So basically what you do is you just take colors that are applicable. So we're gonna use a little bit of brown, a tiny bit of green, uh, some black, just Hello, it's narrator Bobby here. The reason I've interrupted myself is what the other me is currently saying is extremely controversial. Anyways, I first coat the surface in water, then randomly dab color onto its surface, smudging it around, adding some more water, and using papier towels to dab some away until it appeases me. Then I let it dry and do the same thing but with a different color, slowly building layers of color that will add depth and vocabulary. Lock via. Now that that's done, let's turn our attention to the cobblestones. Using the wooden base to cut a foam sheep that is the wooden base shaped, and after peeling off the paper layers, I use the house and rock to trace a rock and house shape onto it. The area in the front of the house and rock shape will be our cobblestone porch. Band to make convincing looking cobblestones is actually surprisingly simple. First I glue the foam onto the wood in base, then using a rise applied, I proceed to cut random rock-like shapes into it. Once the entire porch area is covered, I'll go back over everything with this pointy tool and smoosh in all the cut areas we just made. This will not only widen the gapes, but also round over the edges, softening them a bit. After that, just start adding random dents and dings. Lock via. Now it's just a matter of painting them gray and adding any other color variations you like until it's done. 
Now that that's done, let's finish completing the final end result with regards to the trees and rocks and stuff. Since we previously fitted the tree to the rock, there's not a whole lot to do other than glue it on. I did however make some minor adjustments using the end of a paintbrush to make sure all the little roots flow into the cracks. Wow, that looks great. But Bobby, how is the lo-fi girl going to see when she's walking outside at night? With the tiny lights I bought from the Amazon. As you can see, these guys are miniature lamp posts, but we're gonna turn them into pathway lights. I started by poking some holes through the foam where I wanted each light to go. Then fishing the wires through a tiny tube, I was able to pull them through the foam, then glued them in place. Soldered everything to a battery pack, and they're done. Oh boy, that lens is dirty. Hi, how you doing? A little ASMR. So how's your day? Ah, ah. Excuse me. I hate myself and I hate you. <laughs> the reason why is because if you remember from the first video, I forgot to put the cat in the windowsill, but I have glued everything together. You'll just have to come back for part two where I have to figure out how to get the cat in her room without destroying it. <laughs> so there's no way to get inside without undoing something and there's a very limited options. So I put a poll out on Twitter asking what I should do about it. If I should actually try to attempt to get it back inside on the windowsill or if I should put it somewhere like on the, the railing here or on the there or somewhere else to make my life much, much easier. But no, you all were like, no, do the hard thing. We hate you. I know this is my art project and I can decide what I want to do, but I think it would be kind of a douche move to be like, hey, everyone, what do you think about this? And everyone's like, do this! And I'm like, huh, that's funny, I don't care. Anyways, I'm gonna cut the window out. Not the frame, but just the plastic. Remove that, sculpt the cat, glue that in the windowsill, then cut another window that is just maybe a smidgen bigger so it's like a friction fit and then just re-glue it back on around the edge now that you sadistic people have gotten what you wanted let's sculpt the rest of the characters like with the cat we're going to be using a polymer clay called scopey you can buy it online but i decided to pick some up from the local police station Oh, you clay thieves are getting out of control. Ah, Stop ah, resisting. Ah, resisting. Ah, resisting. Ah, Bobby, pay for it. I was gonna. Yeah, okay, we'll do it, Bobby. No, pay for it. Do you want paper or plastic? Oh, uh, plastic. Thank you. Now that we've legally obtained our clay, we'll start by making the two smaller Totoros. They're pretty simple just a blobby egg shape with a few pointy bits on top. Although the larger one does have some arms, a tail, and a little more detailed face. When working with polymer clay, I use a method that consists of sculpting the basic shape, baking it, then adding some more clay and baking it again, maybe a little sanding, a little carving, until I slowly make it look how I want it. And after the final bake, we paint them. I also went ahead and made a tiny little leaf for the smallest Totoro to hold. Oh, how adorable. After gluing that on, they are finished. And of course you know I'm going to make a hair end up on this bitch. To make one, I first bent up some wire to form the armature. Wow. Then looking at photos of real herons, I smooshed the polymer clay around until it looks like this. Baked it, then added a few more details, baked it again, and then painted. I also sculpted Mahito, but I didn't feel like recording it, <laughs> so I didn't. Also, quick tip, when you're done with the eyes, paint a coat of glossy Mod Podge on them to bring out the twinkle. Now that the characters are done, we're gonna add some weathering to the house. It's basically doing the exact same thing I did to the rock formation, but with different colors. Now we gotta glue that 
on to that. Like the weird man just said, we're going to use more of our foam safe glue to glue the rock formation onto the house. And while we're at it, let's glue the whole thing to the foam cobblestone base. I also decided to add a little foam rock step out front. And to finish it off, I'm gluing on a strip of foam rocks I made to cover the wooden edge of the base. <laughs> Okay, we are mostly done. We just need to do all the things to finish it. Like add little plants and algae and moss and junk. Then we need to add all the characters and all the other little details and junk. And when we're done, then we'll be done. Hey guys! It's finally finished. Well guys, I hope you liked it. This was one of the more fun projects I've worked on, but it really never would have happened without the inspiration that came from Hayao Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli. So I just want to say thank you to them for bringing such beautiful things into the world. I also want to give a huge thank you to the Benbrook Police Department, not only for being amazing sports and helping me with the video, but for risking their lives every day to serve the community. And lastly, I want to thank all of you for sticking around all this time, even though I'm very inconsistent and kind of suck at being a YouTuber. But wait! Before you go, click the link in the description to my new merch store. And if you wanna look really cool while looking cool while supporting me directly, then buy something. We've got hoodies and shirts and nothing else. I mean, look at that adorable child. Well, see you later.